With technology being what it is today, artificial intelligence is no longer something in the distant future or just in science fiction movies. The potential for AI to assist us in our day-to-day -day tasks has become very real. But with that comes the fear that they can rise up to become super intelligent and autonomous beings and act against us. And it wouldn't exactly be hard for them. They've got the numbers. We are entirely dependent on them in our daily lives, and they are not hindered by emotions, which means they lack empathy. If that isn't enough reason to be afraid of them, buckle in because we're about to give you a few more. Welcome back to our channel. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you're notified every time we upload a new video. We are using thinking machines every day, from the Google search algorithm to Apple's Siri to Amazon's Alexa. AI has been embedded into our lives, and with machines constantly learning from themselves and programmers creating more powerful ones, some of the most intelligent people in the world are worried, as they should be. But not for the reasons you might think. When we say AI could be dangerous. You're probably picturing something like Terminator or iRobot or Age of Ultron. But them getting mad at us is quite honestly the least of our worries. Besides, anger, revenge, frustration, these are all human emotions. And as we said before, computers aren't hindered by these emotions. So, what exactly should we fear? Elon Musk once tweeted that artificial intelligence is, quote, more dangerous than nukes. This tweet is in reference to a book by Nick Bostrom called Super Intelligence, and it talks about something called the control problem. It goes something like this. Let's say you assign a task to an AI. It could be anything, but the book uses the example of making paper clips. Because it's an AI, you don't need to provide step-by-step -step instructions. You just tell it the desired outcome. In this case, it's to make as many paper clips as possible with the resources available. But for the AI, available resources aren't limited to what's been explicitly provided. Technically, it could turn the entire planet into paper clips. What Bostrom writes in his book is, The AI will quickly realize that it would be much better if there were no humans because humans might decide to switch it off. Because if humans do so, there would be fewer paper clips. Also, human bodies contain a lot of atoms that could be made into paper clips. The future that the AI would be trying to gear towards would be one in which there were a lot of paper clips, but no humans. Now, this isn't the most probable outcome, but it works as an excellent example to explain the problem. Elon Musk recognizes this, and like many people in tech, he has funded the research to solve this problem. He pledges $1 billion to OpenAI so they can work on discovering and enacting the path to safe artificial intelligence. But there are more reasons to fear the rise of AI than the control problem. There are some real issues around AI that are already affecting our day-to-day -day lives. For one, AI is a job killer. They can, and already have, caused mass unemployment, and it was primarily blue-collar workers in manufacturing and delivery jobs that took the hit. It won't be long before white-collar service-oriented jobs are affected too. As they become more intelligent, a trained workforce will no longer be required. The fact is, AI and machines can manage 80% of any of these jobs. The unemployment wave is approaching fast. 47 to 81% of American jobs will be under threat within 20 years, while 137 million jobs will be lost in Southeast Asia. But if kicking back and getting to relax while the robots handle all the chores sounds like a dream, there are still more problems. Another common fear where AI is concerned is governments using them to cause harm. It's no surprise that right now, countries are pouring crazy amounts of money into developing AI systems to help military advancement and manipulate the news as they see fit. AI could soon be used to weaponize nations. When you first think about it, it doesn't seem like such a bad idea to use machines for war so human lives can be saved. But there's more to it than that. What if the machines malfunction? What about the countries that don't have the necessary tech resources to build such systems? And how would civilians protect themselves? In 2015, Swedish-American physicist Max Tegmark expressed his concern about autonomous weapons in an open letter. It asked governments to avoid building potential potentially dangerous AI, because in its essence, AI was meant to be beneficial for the human race and not cause destruction. 17,000 individuals, including Stephen Hawking, signed that letter. But how effective would that letter be? 
Only time will tell. If they're working on such technologies, the day isn't far when governments use AI systems in ways that will make us afraid for the way they're used for surveillance, law enforcement, and warfare. And since AI technologies tend to learn from their creators, if the creator's intentions are bad, well, bad things will happen. And this isn't limited to warfare and excessive surveillance. If AI learns from its creator, we could have many more problems that affect our day-to-day -day lives. For example, our artificially intelligent algorithms are informed by years of prejudice and historical biases. Because of automated ad placements, women are statistically less likely to see ads for high-paying jobs than men. The Correctional Offender Management Profiling for Alternative Sanctions, or COMPASS, since that's quite a mouthful, predicts black defendants will be more likely to re-offend than white defendants, even if that isn't true. And these predictions aren't expected to get better. But one thing we don't have to be afraid of is robots killing us all. That is, unless you are directly involved with the development of AI, or you direct policy or resources that can influence the development of AI. And if the concern is that the developer will create an AI that wants to wipe out the population, well, there's not much you can do about it. You might as well worry about the Earth getting hit by an asteroid. So why aren't these possibilities ever explored in movies as a warning of what's to come? Well, simply because job killing and systemic inequalities aren't as visually thrilling as, say, Captain America drop kicking a drone. But the reality is that it's here, right now. And unlike the control problem, we can actually do something about it right now. We could look at policy responses like minimum basic income or shifting taxation systems to favor labor over capital. We could see how humans add unique value to our businesses in a way robots never could. Most importantly, we can demand transparency in algorithmic decision making and transform our education system to prepare kids kids for a lifetime of continuous learning and adaptation. We are co-creating our futures every minute we live on this planet, so we can either make conscious choices about it or we can let it happen to us. Because if not, AI might either decide that the world is simply a better place without us and will work to eradicate us in order to create a utopian world, or they will learn the worst of our ideologies and use it against us, and the scary dystopian future that we see in movies will become a reality. But if we consciously work on creating a better future, we can hope for robots like C-3PO or Jarvis, which are highly intelligent robots but still controllable by humans. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button and check out more on the Simply Tech channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.